Hi, everybody, and welcome back to A Man, A Van, and A Plan. And today, we're going to be starting to install some subfloor. I won't be able to finish this today because I am waiting on my propane tank. I ordered my propane tank, gosh, it's probably been about three or four weeks ago, and it still hasn't come in yet. So I can't really do much until I get the propane tank because it's got to be mounted up underneath and bolted down through the floor. So the plan today is get everything out of the van that I just bought at the hardware store, lay out my furring strips, lay out my floor, get things cut, but not necessarily fastened down. The fastening down will come again later on after the propane tanks installed. I just got back from the hardware store and I got I'm going to guess maybe one third of what I'm going to need from there. So I'm going to get all that unloaded and organized and then we'll get going on the flooring. What's going on bro? Great! More porch presents. Yep, yep. All right, I've got the furring strips laid out in here. Again, I'm not going to attach these down just yet. I'm just getting everything cut out so it's much easier and goes much faster once I have the propane tank mounted. So here are the cutouts. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take that piece of rubber flooring that I pulled out of here uh, day one when I bought the van and I'm going to use that as my template to cut up my three-quarter inch plywood that's going to be my actual subfloor. Okay, I've decided for the sake of filming to do this over here. I've got my rubber mat laid out and I'm going to use this as my template to draw out where I'm going to cut this. So, first part's easy. And that's what we're going to cut off. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run that straight line with my circular saw. It's going to be way easier and give me a way better line than with my jigsaw. So I've got my circular saw fence and guide set up here. This is just a homemade guide. There are probably tutorials on YouTube about how to do one of these. Uh, very, very simple to do and it'll make your cuts just look great. So I've got that set up. And I'm going to take this long four foot cut first and get rid of that piece. And as always, eye protection and ear protection. These are the marks I laid out earlier using that rubber floor as a template. This is what we're going to use to run our jigsaw along and cut this shape out. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see how we did. It's not bad, but there's a couple places that I want to trim it up just a little bit so that it fits a little more snug right up against here. Eventually there's going to be a step covering this, so it's not that big of a deal, but I want it to fit just a hair more snugly. So I'm going to make a couple of marks, pull it back out, trim it up in two places I think, and then put it back in. So the last thing I need to do with this piece that I've just cut and before I cut my next one is cut a channel into it. Reason being is when I step on it, I don't want there to be any seams. I want it to seem seamless and I don't want anything, you know, raised. So we're going to do that now. 
First thing I'm going to do is do this on a practice piece to make sure that I have the depth of my router set properly. There's my channel. Let's see how we did here after making those adjustment cuts and cutting in this uh, rabbit joint. All right, I like that better. I've got my template laid out for this next one. This one we're going to cut lengthwise, and you'll see what I mean here in just a minute once we start cutting it and get it laid in. We are going to go ahead and do the passenger side first. So I'm going to make sure that my template's lined up exactly, and I'm going to take some measurements, and then we're going to cut out the passenger side. All right, we got it all cut out. Now to lay it in and see how we did. That's not too bad at all. And our seam that we cut up front fits perfectly. Okay, we need to get this last piece cut out, and we're going to do it basically the same way. We're just going to use the rubber floor as a template, trace around it, make our cuts, lay it in. All right, what we're going to do next is put this floor down finely. What I've already done, I did this several weeks ago, is I cut out some furring strips, and then I cut out some one-inch plywood to lay on top of the furring strips. When I initially made my measurements for these, I made a little mistake and uh, I didn't take into account how high up the insulation was going to sit off the floor. I had measured it from the bottom of the grooves in the floor, not the top of the grooves in the floor. So once I got my furring strips in and I laid my first layer of insulation down, I realized that I had made a mistake, so I had to cut half inch plywood into the same width as these furring strips and lay them on top and fasten them down with some uh, construction adhesive. So I'm going to do a layer of construction adhesive um, and get the furring strips down. Then I'm going to do a layer of construction adhesive and screws to put the plywood furring strips on top of those. And then you'll see me lay in the insulation in between all that. Uh, should go pretty quick because everything's already cut. I am going to have to make uh, one minor adjustment uh, around the screws where I put in the propane tank, but this should, this should go pretty, pretty quickly. We can get moving and grooving. Right here I need to make a little adjustment. I've got this piece of steel in keeping this uh, carriage bolt up, not upright, but uh, straight. This is holding on the propane tank underneath. Yeah, I'm going to cut out this piece of this furring strip, and then I'll probably rip it right down there so that this can fit in. I cut this piece into three pieces, and then ripped this piece so it's still got some support when I go to put this top furring strip on. This is going to be under the bed. Nobody's going to be standing here, uh, so nobody will feel any kind of sag or anything there, but there might be something heavy placed here for storage, so I just want to make sure that this has a little more support underneath there. 
Now that we have our furring strips down, we're going to go ahead and lay down the rest of the subfloor. I am using outdoor galvanized deck screws for this. Uh, doing that because this is a van, it may get a little bit wet, and uh, regular wood screws would eventually rust and break. Galvanized won't. All right, I've got this all fastened down, and I'm going to do one more thing to make sure that this subfloor doesn't go anywhere. And people have different opinions on this. This subfloor is probably fine. I've got it laid down with uh, construction adhesive, I've got it laid down with wood screws. It's solid, it's not going to shift. But I just want to make sure, it's a small step, it's going to take me maybe another 45 minutes or an hour. I'm filming it, so probably a little bit more, but whatever. I've got some T-nuts and I've got some uh, carriage screws, some carriage bolts. And what you do is you drill out going down into the wood for the T-nut. You place the T-nut, and then I'm going to get underneath the van, and I'm going to take the screw and screw it up into the wood like this. So that'll bring the, it'll draw the T-nut down into the wood. The screw will be held on underneath. Um, this does involve, though, drilling through the bottom of the van floor, the metal van floor. Some people don't like it. Um, I'm going to use some of that undercoat paint to paint it and make sure that it's, uh, it's watertight. So I think it's fine. I'm going to do it. I just did notice that I got the wrong kind of screw. I'm going to have to go back and get a different kind, something I can get my ratchet up underneath there with. But uh, I think I am going to go ahead and drill for it now. So if you look up underneath the van here, you'll notice that there's places that you don't want to drill down into. You don't want to drill down into them for a variety of reasons. Uh, first of all, you don't want to hit anything that you shouldn't, like the muffler or the exhaust system or the gas tank over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I drill into this area, into that area, and there's a small area down there but I've got to make sure that I get my measurements properly. I also don't want to be drilling into that heat shield right over there. So it looks like I can fit maybe two in this area, maybe three in that area, and we'll see what I can fit down over there. So I'm going to lay this out first. All right, that heat shield is 47 inches away from the edge of the van here. So as long as I stay well away from that, I can fit uh, two fasteners here. So I'm going to put one at probably 15. I'll put one at... Actually, no, I changed my mind. I'm going to put one here at 22, and I'm going to put one here at about 37 because I know that I have furring strips running through there. So it'll go all the way through the furring strip and uh, th down into the floor of the van. Um, I have another one at about 48, another furring strip down there. It's just getting a little too close to that heat shield for my tastes. I think this will be just fine. So I'm going to lay out the rest of them just the same way. This is a zinc plated hex bolt, something I can get my socket into when I'm underneath. Again, it's a 3 8 size going into this 3 8 T-nut. So this is going to be a multi-step process. Uh, I'm going to do one full one and just make sure that I've got the system down before I go and drill a bunch of holes through my van floor. So I'm going to do one of these in the back first because it's convenient, easy to get to, probably pretty easy for filming. Okay, step one is to take your 3 8 inch wood bit, stick it in your drill, and I've marked off where this goes. It goes right through the furring strips that I've got underneath. Alright, so I've gone through the three-quarter inch plywood, 
and then two levels of half inch uh, furring strip and um, the furring strips that I cut out of half inch plywood. All right, next we need to take our 3 8 inch metal bit and I'm just going to double check underneath that I don't have anything under here that I need to be concerned about. No, I do not. So I've got my metal bit in and this is going to take me down through the floor of the van. There it is. I can see all the way down there. All right, I'm taking my T-nut and I'm going to start with a rubber mallet. All right, next I'm going to go underneath, stick one of these uh, hex bolts up through there and take my ratchet and start ratcheting it. I'm going to use that to ratchet it down. All right, I'm also going to use one of these uh, zinc plated uh, lock washers. I'm going to use that on the bottom side just to help keep this bolt from going anywhere. And there it is, there is one completed. I'm gonna come along later and hit this with some of that uh, Rust-Oleum undercoat paint. And that'll help take care of uh, any rust or corrosion. That's it, the floor is done. As always everybody, thanks so much for coming along. Get out there and keep adventuring, get out there and keep building, and we'll see you next time.